if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about two important things. One is how to control the vehicular air pollution. And second is noise, which is also now considered as air polluted. So to control, vehicular air pollution that means the pollution or the pollutants which are released from the automobiles one step is to use a clean fuel use of clean fuel and one such clean fuel is cng so all the public vehicles they have been shifted from the regular fossil fuel to the cng so uh, the public transport buses especially, they use CNG. CNG does not release any kind of pollution. So if we are able to convert all those old public transport vehicles into CNG vehicles, automatically the vehicular emission or pollutants would be really, uh, reduced. A similar uh, case uh, study was done in Delhi. And by shifting or converting all the public transport vehicles into CNG vehicles, it was found that the air pollutant level or air pollution level was reduced to substantial levels. So this is one method to control air pollution. And then the next is to put in some norms in place. Earlier, we were using euro norms these are european norms which are considered as best as far as it comes to the air pollution control so all the new vehicles which were produced they had to satisfy or fulfill those euro norms but later on it was changed the name was changed to Bharat Stage Emission Standard. And this is what we nowadays know as BS. This BS was introduced in the year 2000. So first uh, stage norm was called BS1. So it was mandatory for all the automobile, uh, automobiles or vehicles to have these norms. Without that, the government would not give them the permission. Then these were upgraded BS2, BS3, BS4. So this is how the norms were improved from 1 to 2 and then 4. So BS4, BS5, BS6, this is how the planning is. That they would keep upgrading the engines or the machines so that there is less and less and less of pollution which is released into the atmosphere. So one is shifting from the traditional fossil fuel to a cleaner fuel so that that fuel doesn't release in, uh, re, uh, result into any kind of pollution. And secondly, make strict norms so that the new vehicle which is put on the road fulfills all those uh, required uh, norms so that the emission from every automobile is automatically reduced. This is part one that is we are taking care of this air pollution by various methods and the government implements all these uh, norms and rules so it is strictly followed. In 1981, Air Prevention and Control of Air Pollution Act 
was introduced. That was in 1981. In 1987, there was an amendment and noise was considered as an air pollutant. Before that, it was not in the list of air pollutant. When we made the list of air pollutants, we had all those things, carbon monoxide, oxides of sulfur, then uh, PAN, all those things. Noise was not there. Now, after 87, the noise is also considered as air pollutant. What exactly is noise? Any sound which is not comfortable to your ears becomes noise. Uh, say for example, sometimes there is loud music which is being played. So people who are uh, organizing a party and playing that loud music, probably that is a very uh, enjoyable thing. But others might not find it very comforting. So they might find that this is very, very loud. So there is no definition as such that this is noise. Any sound which is uncomfortable to your ears is considered as noise. Now, if we talk about our audible range, what is that range that we can hear or our ears can perceive? It is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. If we change the unit decibels, then it is 0 decibels to 120 decibels. This is the normal human audible range. So we can hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 or if this is one and the same thing, but we are writing it in different units, 0 to 120. I'm sure you've heard of people saying that pin drop silence. That means it is so much of silence there that if you drop a pin, that also is audible. That is like the minimum. And 120 is a loud uh, sound. Or if we talk about 20,000 hertz, that is very loud. It has been uh, said by scientists or doctors that if 150 decibels sound or noise of the level 150 decibels, if you hear this, then it can damage your eardrums. Can damage eardrums. It can even rupture the eardrums. So what sound is or which noise is what level? When we are talking normally, that is around 30 to 40 decibels. We are talking about decibels. If you are whispering, it is somewhere around 15 to 20 decibels. So when we whisper, when we are talking to our uh, friend very softly and we think that people are not able to hear what we are saying, we need to remember this, that our audible range starts from zero. And that whispering sound is also about 15, approximately 15 to 20 decibels. And the normal is like 35, 30, 35 decibels, which is the normal talk. 120 decibels is like some firecrackers. Those are 150. And when do we get this decibel? It is the jets, the jet engine noise. At the same time, it can be of the railway engine. So if we are standing on a railway platform and we find that a rail uh, engine moving right in front of us and if it whistles, that sound is 150 decibels. So it is very, very dangerous to our ears. Now, how does this noise affect it? It's a pollutant. Pollutant means it must be causing some kind of a negative impact on our body. How does it affect us? People who live in noisy areas, they are more irritable. They get irritated uh, very often. Their blood pressure is higher. Their heart rate is higher. Now, the reason is that noise 
is responsible for release of adrenaline. It increases secretion of adrenaline. And if adrenaline level is high, then whatever is the function of adrenaline, all those things will happen. So what happens due to adrenaline? Blood pressure increases, heart rate increases, adrenaline reduces secretion of saliva, digestive juices, peristalsis, so person doesn't feel hungry. So if you are not hungry, you would not eat properly, then it would result into some kind of deficiencies, malnutrition. Nutritional deficiencies because of adrenaline. <clears throat> adrenaline also causes stored glycogen to get converted into glucose because adrenaline is a stress hormone. It is produced in the stress condition and the stress condition demands that there should be more and more glucose available in the muscles, in the cells so that ATP can be generated and some kind of movement, running and all those things can take place. So blood sugar level also increases. So just one thing, noise level is high it causes adrenaline level to increase and then everything will be taken care of by adrenaline. So noise affects our body exactly in the same way as adrenaline does because it is responsible for increased secretion of adrenaline. The person who normally lives in the noisy area is very irritable. irritability increases that when you talk to these people with normal discussion also they sometimes get very aggressive very hyper it happens when we visit some shops and we find that the shopkeepers are like not very uh, normal they are sometimes very irritable they're sometimes very aggressive so one reason could be the same if the shop is in that area which is very very noisy then in that case, this could be one reason for that irritability. So, noise is now considered as air polluted and it was added in this list in 87. The act which was introduced in 81 was amended. Amended means there are some changes which are brought about in this list. So, now when we have air pollutants, we would have all those like carbon monoxide, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, uh, CFC, all those and noise also. So these are various noise pollutants and now we know how to take care of these noise pollutants. In the next part, we'll take up water pollution.